I spent over $750 on Pokemon 151, and this is what it got me. That's 65 packs open, which is 550 English cards, 70 Japanese cards, and then we're going to take them all together, put them into our collection, our binder collection, and I'm going to give you guys the tips, tricks, and strategies to putting that together. Welcome to Wags's tips and tricks to building the perfect Pokemon card binder collection. Today we're going to be using the Pokemon 151 set to build out our binder, but any of these tips and tricks could be used uh, for your Pokemon card journey. So if we go to the Elite Trainer Box manual, which comes with every Elite Trainer Box, you will see the list of cards and the order in which they come in. So that's the first tip. The second thing you'll want to know is storage. If you look at my desk right now, there's cards everywhere. The thing that we want to do is have better storage before we end up building out that binder. So the things that I use are, example, the booster bundles. In other cases, you could also use the booster boxes to store your cards before you organize them. Or if you're a professional, unlike me, you could organize the cards as you open them. I just get so excited when I open the cards that I don't think about organizing them at the time. Let's just get right into how I organize the 151 set. So here are all the cards we've opened with 151. Almost $750 have been spent, and we're still waiting on the UPC opening, which I'm going to do later this week, so stay tuned for that. Remember to subscribe so that we can watch me fill in all the holes that we determined at the end of this video from our binder collection. So what I did here is I organized them by the number. It's a little bit more difficult by the typing. Uh, it's a lot easier to identify colors than it is to identify the number of a card as quickly as possible. So when you're organizing it by type, you lay down all the types on this sheet similar as I've done here in piles and you just go crazy go nuts one two three four five just go through them now with the numbers you have to be a Pokemon trainer or a Pokemon master rather to know which ones go where so obviously we know the starters are right at the beginning but it gets a little bit more difficult as you get on and I'm admittedly not a Pokemon master I'm probably just a Pokemon trainer right now so I was not that knowledgeable of the actual numbers of the cards however on the bottom of the cards, which we see here, there is the number. So we have the number 1 to 165. Of course we know that there's 151 Pokemon in the original Gen 1 series. The other ones being trainer cards and uh, energy cards actually do not have a number, and we put those to the side. So I did 1 to about 48, 48 to about 77, and then 77 to 116. So the 116 of course being 116 to the very end, the 151. Other things that we should note here of course are top loaders. Now for me, top loaders I use for any of the illustrations, full arts. The reason why is because I want to keep them in pristine condition. I have a little bit of PTSD from the time that my Blastoise got cut in half. You can see that in my first video ever. Every illustration or full, full art, regardless of the value, I put them in here as soon as we open them. As I have done, with all my cards and we will go through them a little bit later. I put both my Japanese and English in here. But we're going to be filling in our core set and then going through all the cards that I got in the illustration full arts of the rare cards after 165. So without further ado, I think it's time that we just get right into building the card set in our binder. I hope everyone is doing well and enjoying the video. I wish I was able to move this fast when I was actually putting them in. I think in total it took me about 40 minutes, but it was definitely time well spent. I got the chance to look at the cards again and really appreciate being back on my Pokemon journey. My ultimate goal here is to get the master set for 151, but I haven't planted my money tree and I forgot to invest in Amazon in the early 90s, so we're taking it slow and we'll build it out over time. This is pretty crazy, but after opening 55 packs, I found out I was still missing some commons, believe it or not. The X's are, I guess, are understandable, but seriously, I'm still missing Nidoran, Mail, Poliwhirl, Weeping Bell, Vaporeon, and Articuno. I have a few commons lined up for trades with my cousin sometime over the next few weeks, so we'll scratch those off, and of course, our final 16 packs in the UPC. In the organization stage, I ordered everything from 1 to 165. This makes the process so much easier. I'm just grabbing my cards, then I put them in the slot. Bada bing, bada boom. I have a side pile where I put my extra cards. I'm planning to try to create a video where I tell you what I'm doing with my common cards that are slowly taking over my desk and soon my room. So stay tuned for that and let me know in the comments what you do with yours. I'll include your tip and give you a shout out if it's something incredibly unique. You'll see in some cases I'm putting multiple cards in the same slot. That's because I'm putting non-hollows behind the reverse hollows. 
I should have done this earlier on to see which reverse hollows I had because honestly, now I'm pretty stoked to open that UPC and try to find some reverse hollows I haven't gotten yet. The order I'm going for is reverse hollows in front, then hollows, then non hollows. Probably asking yourself why I'd put the reverse hollows in front of the hollows for Pokemon like Mewtwo, Jolteon, or Raichu. Well, it's simple because the reverse hollows will look way more dope. I also think it's rarer to pull a reverse hollow than it is a hollow foil. Like, can you believe I don't have a reverse hollow for Thou Who Shall Not Be Named? I've also been putting my Japanese EX cards where I'd put them in the English set. For now, I'll combine the two for visual purposes, but eventually when I get the English version, I'll move the Japanese to the back of the binder. This binder will only feature the core set. You can easily tell what's in the core set by looking at the total set number at the bottom left of the cards. If the number is within the total, 9 out of 165 for instance, then it's within the core set. If you see a number like 199 out of 165, then you're looking at rare cards like full arts or illustrations. I'm keeping a separate binder for these cards because I put them in top loaders. Top loader binders do exist, so eventually I'll get one and put them in there once I've started buying all the singles for 151. In the meantime, I store my Charizard and bring it out to play every so often by displaying on my desk. And finally, I encourage you to track your collection. I'm using Collector at the moment, but feel free to track however you think is best. The ultimate goal here is to easily identify what you need or don't need. And right at the end, you'll notice that I put all of my promo cards. So right now that's the Zapdos Alakazam EX, as well as my Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to the channel. It was so nice to share my first binder collection with everyone. We're now at 154 of 165 cards in the core set, but we'll be opening this 151 UPC over the next week, so watch out for that. I'll end it here with a look at some of my rarest card pulls from 151. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.